This video will cover the Year 8 Algebra Fundamentals Test Preview. So these are the sort of questions you should expect at a C level. I've put some time tags below uh, for the question numbers for anyone following along on the test preview and some descriptions for anyone who's using this just to help with particular issues in this topic. When we're simplifying these equations and they're all multiplied together, we're allowed to collect up our like terms. So what we can do here is we can multiply the numbers together. So two fives are 10. And then we just stack the numbers, or the letters rather, right beside one another. Now there's actually time signs in between each of these, but we're too lazy to write them in, okay? This is the correct mathematical way of writing it. You don't need to put these in alphabetical order, but it's usually good practice to do that. Question 1b is negative 6p multiplied by 4y. We can multiply our numbers together. So minus 6 times 4 makes negative 24. And then we're going to stack the letters one by beside one another in alphabetical order, remembering there's actually times between each. Question 1c has indices. So we collect our numbers, 2 fives are 10. And this is really like saying a times a times a, so it becomes a to the power of 3. Okay, There's actually a little 1 here that we don't write. For anyone who's up to index notation, when we multiply indices, we actually add these together. So that's something that you'll learn next year in year 9. For the meantime, just remember to count up your a's and put the little number at the top. Question 1D, we've got negative M's, A's and 4's. Now there's actually a 1 here, we don't write that, okay? So this actually means minus 1 times 4, so we've got minus 4, and then we've got A and M. So minus 4 times A times M. Question 1E, this is negative 5M times negative 3M. So we're going to handle the numbers first, we've got minus 5, multiplied by minus 3. Remember when there's two negatives, it makes a positive. So we have positive 15. And then we've got m multiplied by m. So that is m squared. Remember this little square symbol means this number multiplied by itself. I know that that's a letter here, but this letter represents a number. Okay, so it's this number multiplied by itself. Okay, question 1f. This time we've got D's, we've got C's, we've got M's. We're going to collect up our terms as we go. We've got a 1 sitting in front of us that we can't see. So it's really 1 times 4. It's one group of DC squared. So 1 times 4 is 4. And then we're going to go in with the C's. I've got C multiplied by itself here, multiplied by C again. Then I've got a D and then I've got an M. Question 2a, this time I am dividing, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this as much as I can. I still deal with the numbers first, okay? So you're gonna to have to go back to simplifying fractions in year seven here. So 16 over 12, I know that four will go into 16 and four will go into 12. So it'll go into 16 four times and it will go into 12 three times. Now, as we look at these going down here, they're allowed to eliminate one another. So 1a divided by 1a cancels itself out. And it's not really cancelled at all, because if this was a 3 divided by 3, it would be one whole, okay? But we don't write it in here. If that confuses you, just remember as you work down the line, you're allowed to eliminate them if they match. And we'll go on for more questions with that. Question 2b. I'm going to have a look at the numbers first. I'm looking for a common denominator, a number that will go into 22 that will also go into 4, and 2 will go in there. So I know that I have got 11 over 2, and it's negative, because of the negative sign here. The c's can cancel one another out, like in question 2a, and the b will remain, and the a will remain, and so that's the answer. Question 2c. This time I've got 3 over 5. Now I can't do much with that, so 3 over 5 is as simple as it will go, so it will remain. 
The only difference here is look, I've got A multiplied by itself here and I've got one on the bottom. That means that this one will eliminate one of those. So I'm left with an A and the M and the C stay as they are. Question 2D. I've got negative 40 divided by 5. Remember when it's like this, it's just another way of saying divided by, okay? But it's dividing by all of these things. So 40 divided by 5 is 8, and it's a negative. And then the x's eliminate one another, but the d remains down the bottom. Question 2e. Negative 9 divided by negative 18. When you divide one negative by another, the answer will be positive, And we know that this has become a half. Okay. A's eliminate one another. V's eliminate one another. And all I've got left down here is an N. 2F. 6 divided by minus 4. I know that 2 will go into both of these numbers, so it will become 3 over 2, and it's negative because there's one negative in there. There are a to the power of 3 here and a to the power of 1, okay, so this a will knock out one of those, so it will become a squared, and the m's will eliminate each other as well, so it will become a squared. Now just for anyone who's interested in going ahead for index law, when you divide indices, okay, this is really um, a subtraction of these numbers, so it's 3 minus 1 making 2, okay? You'll learn about that next year. In question 3, they're asking us to simplify by collecting like terms. So we have to take it down as simply as we can, but we're only allowed to collect things that are the same, okay? So when we're looking at these numbers, the letters, they represent numbers that, that we don't know what they are, okay? So we're only allowed to collect letters that are the same because that way we know how many groups of them we've got. So really what this is telling me is that I've got five groups of M, whatever M is, three groups of A, whatever that is, and yet another two groups of M. So all together I have seven groups of M and three groups of A. This is simple as it can go, okay, this is fully simplified. Question 3b has got groups of CP, okay, now they're all groups of CP, so whatever CP is, maybe it's 2 times 3, who knows, or maybe it's something that can change, what we need to do is we need to say we have a debt of CP, okay, so a debt of 4 CPs, and then 5 CPs are paid back, so we, we, we've hit 1 CP, but we're still going to take 12 CPs away. So all together we have negative 11 CPs. And we're allowed to add all of these ones together because the letter combination is exactly the same, but it must be exactly the same. A, uh, 3C has got two different sorts of terms. It's got M squareds and it's got M's. We're not allowed to collect these, okay? They're not the same. This means a number multiplied by itself, and this means a standalone number. So if this was 3, if m was 3, then these would really be 9s, and these would be 3s. So we're only allowed to collect things that are exactly the same. So here, I've got 8 groups of m squared, and I've got a debt, okay? I'm taking away 7 groups of m squared, so I've got one group of m squared, normally we wouldn't write the one in, okay, and we've got three m's, and we take five m's away, leaving us with negative two m's. Now this is correct, but the most correct way of writing it, the most mathematical way of writing it, is without the one there. If there's no number, it's assumed that it's a one. Question 3D is a bit of a trick question, okay? Do you notice that you've got NH's but you've also got HN's? They're actually the same because BODMAS tells us that when we're multiplying things in a row, it doesn't really matter. We work left to right, but it doesn't really matter which order we multiply them in, okay? 
So you can collect these two terms because they've got the same letter combination. Just because they're not written in the same order doesn't matter. Okay. So this means that I've got seven NHs and I take away eight NHs. So I've got negative one NHs. And this little guy cannot be added to these, okay? He's separate because he's only a H. So it's a different number to a HN or an NH. The other thing to remember is that the symbol in front of it goes with the term, so it stays, okay? Again, this is correct, but it's not the most mathematical way of writing it. We'd actually just write minus NH minus 2H. And we'd assume that this was a negative 1. Question 3E is really similar to question 3C. Okay, so we've got G squareds and we've got Gs. They can't be collected. But the G squareds can all be collected up together and the Gs can be collected up together. And we're going to remember, even if you have to circle them, okay, that the symbol in front of it goes with the term. So we've got two Gs and we take away seven Gs, we've got negative five G squareds, okay? If we've got two Gs here and we take two Gs away, it's not there at all, it's nothing, okay? So the answer is just negative five G squared. Question three F. Okay, so we've got AMHs, we've got HMs, and we've got MHs. So like this one, we know that we're allowed to collect those ones. It doesn't matter that their letters are out of order, they've got the same combination of letters. But because this little guy's got an A in it, he's by himself. He's not allowed to be included with these. So we'll collect these ones up. Remember that the symbol in front goes with the term, okay? So the 3 AMH stays by itself. And then we've got minus 4, minus 9, makes minus 13. Uh, we will go with HMs, because I like to write things in alphabetical order, but it's not necessary. Up until question 4, most of the things on the sheet previously you've probably seen in year 7, but expanding might be new to you. So when you see the word expand, what we're doing is we're multiplying 4, 4 by A, then 4 by 5. So in my head I'm going that times that, that times that, okay? So 4 times A makes 4A, and 4 times 5 makes 20. When we're expanding again, we're doing that times that, then that times that, okay? So 3 times 5 makes 15. And then 3 times minus 3b makes minus 9b. So we're multiplying these numbers together, not forgetting about that negative. It goes with the term. Question 4c, that times that, that times that. So 7 times a makes 7a, 7 times negative 4 makes minus 28. 4D, when we're expanding, that times that, that times that. Not forgetting the negative goes with that term. So 2 times 5 makes 10. 2 times minus 2C makes minus 4C. Question 5A. You can see I've already done this one. I'm finding every now and again that the, uh, the video corrupts. So that's okay. This time we're doing the same thing. This times this, this times this. All they've done is they've put a negative out the front. So negative three times x is three x. Negative three times five is 15. Five b, negative two times three makes minus six. Negative two times negative c makes positive two c. And negative times a negative is positive. 5c minus 4 times 2x is minus 8x, minus 4 times 3 is minus 12. 5d minus 6 times 1 makes minus 6, minus 6 times minus 2b makes positive 12b, and negative times a negative is positive. 
In question six, they're asking us to factorize. Now, factorizing is the opposite to expanding. So when we finish with these, they should look like these, okay? So we're going back the other way. And what I'm looking for is something that I can take out the front, okay? The common factor of this, okay? So I know that two can go out the front. And there's only a's in this term, so that leaves a here and 6. Now if that looks confusing, think about it. 2 times a makes 2a, 2 times 6 makes 12. So we're working backwards. 6b is a little less simple than a. What we're looking for are numbers that we can take out the front. Now 6 goes into 6 once, and 6 goes into 12 twice, so I can take 6 out the front. And I want to have a look for some letters. I've got P's in both terms, so P's can go out the front. And I've got C's in both terms, so C's can go out the front. And this B is going to have to stay. So inside the brackets, I'm going to have 2 and a B. And then I'm going to have a minus 1. And I'm going to double check. 6PC times 2B makes 12PBC. Good. And 6PC times minus 1 makes minus 6PC. So yes, I've got that one correct. 6C, we're factorising. I'm looking for common factors across these two terms. So I can see that 3 is going to go into both of these numbers. So I'll bring 3 out the front. And I'm going to look for letters as well. There are Ds in both these terms. So I'll take Ds out. But the C's and B's are different, so they're going to have to stay. Okay, three threes are nine, so a three goes in there, and a C, so that this makes this term. And then three fives are 15, and it's a negative two, so I'll have to make that a minus five. Okay, and the B will have to go back in. Let's double check. 3D times 3C makes 9DC. Yes, 3D times negative 5B makes negative 15DB. We're good. Right, 6D. Well, I can't take any numbers out the front. Okay, there's no common common factors for 3 and 5. Let's take some letters. I've got M's in both, so I'll take M's out. I've got C's in both, so I'll take C's out. The numbers are going to have to stay as they are. Now, this M must multiply by itself so that it becomes squared. So it goes back in. Okay, so M times M makes M squared. And then we've got minus 5 here, and MCs are out here, so that is as it is. Let's test. MC times 3M makes 3M squared C, yep. MC times minus 5 makes minus 5MC, yep, we're good. Okay, question 6C, which is really a something bizarre has happened with this worksheet, okay? And over here in the next one you'll see I've called this one F, but I've called them both on the spreadsheet, on the PowerPoint, so that it's easy to follow. Okay, I'm looking for common factors for 4 and 12. 4, let's see if we can take some letters. I can take the R and the C by the look of it. Okay, and that's going to go out the front of 1, because to make that, that has to be multiplied by 1. So you think about 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, so we're going to multiply that by 1 to keep it the same. And then 4 times negative 3 makes 12. And we're just missing that B, so let's chuck that in. Let's double check. 4RC times 1 does make 4RC. And 4RC times negative 3B does make negative 12RBC. So we're good. So 6F, again, something bizarre with this sheet. I've just changed it so that it lines up with the PowerPoint for you. Looking for common factors, there's only one, so we're not going to worry about it. So let's take letters out. I've got M's on both sides, and I've got C's on both sides. So that leaves me with 11 here, so that we make 11 MC. And then I've got minus 1, but I don't bother putting the 1 in. Okay, I need P's, and I need a C in there, because I need that C to multiply by itself to make the squared. So let's check. MC times 11 makes 11 MC, yep. MC times negative PC makes negative MPC squared. We're good.